Congress leader and General Secretary Jairam Ramesh has flagged the proposed Great Nicobar Island projects initiated in March 2021 at the instance of the Niti Aayog, which is estimated at a cost of Rs 75,000 crores. The Congress has demanded an immediate suspension of all environment and fresh clearances granted for the proposed holistic development of the Great Nicobar Islands in Andaman and Nicobar Islands on the grounds that it poses a grave threat and danger to the region's tribal communities and the natural ecosystem. Well, the fact of the matter is that China has been able to establish multiple military bases that surround the Indian territory and that is of course worrying, including the naval base in Cambodia. And that does of course pose a major threat to the Indian national security as well. So while the Congress has proposed a rational argument that this may disrupt the tribal communities living in the area, the big question or the other side of this coin is uh, also to be looked at. And that is how do we then come to a consensus on this matter, keeping national security in mind as well. To talk more about this, joining us on the show is uh, Commodore Anil Jay Singh, Vice President of the Indian Maritime Foundation. Also joining us on the program is Professor Madhav Nalapad, Editorial Director of the Sunday Guardian. Dr. Sharad Kohli, Senior Economist, also joins uh, us on the program. And last but not the least, Major General Sanjay Soi, Defence Expert, also with us on the program. Professor Nalapad, I'll begin with you. Well, if we are uh, looking at creating some sort of a balance when it comes to national security and uh, preserving, uh, you know, what the tribals, uh, in fact, uh, face in Andaman and Nicobar, which side of it should be leading, uh, which side of it should we be leading towards? And uh, could there be an idea or a surmise that uh, this is something which could be orchestrated in a much balanced way while keeping both the interests in mind? Well, Vineet, uh, Jairam is an outstanding scholar and I have a lot of uh, respect and regard for him. But he is completely wrong when he opposes the Great Nicobar Project. And, and the main reason is, as you correctly said, China. Now, he, by 1921, by 2021, it was very clear to everybody the, about China's aggressive designs in the Indo-Pacific. And both where Andamans are concerned and where, like, and where you know, they, the, uh, all those islands are concerned, they need to be developed very honestly uh, in, a, in a manner that can make them suitable for uh, activity of a sort designed to deter China uh, 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 by India singly and wherever, uh, you know, if necessary, with the help of uh, uh, other powers. I would say, for example, satellite tracking facilities would be very important and various other uh, facilities are very important. There's no question about it. So this is, the, the, the problem is that the Congress party has historically, you remember Barrier Elwin, uh, way back in, in, in Nehru's time, he said that the tribal people, quote unquote, should not be disturbed. They should be left exactly as they are. Well, may I point out that today, we have many distinguished doctors, engineers and scientists uh, from the tribal communities. And they are serving uh, the, the people of India. They are serving abroad. I mean, you cannot freeze a society. You cannot freeze a people in a particular frame of development the way Verrier and Will want it. And of course, uh, you know, as far as Jairam is concerned, as Minister of the Environment, he basically adopted a policy that, look, uh, you know, the environment has got to be protected essentially from human beings. The problem is that India, is, the, the, the population of India is rising by more than half the population of Australia every year. What's going to happen to those people? How are they going to be looked after in terms of employment, in terms of health care, uh, and in terms of, of food? So there have to be compromises made as far as the, this particular project is concerned, the, what is important is to set up facilities in such a way that one, whoever is involved in setting up these facilities does not have any direct or indirect link with uh, uh, countries such as Pakistan and China who are very expert at building indirect linkages in countries that they regard as hostile, the United States, India being among them. And secondly, it is very, very important to ensure that, uh, that you know, uh, to the extent possible, environmental concerns are respected. 
and to the extent possible the concerns the the uh, or regarding lo the, the local culture are preserved there is perfectly no daylight in my view uh, where, where, where in where preserving of local culture is concerned and where development is concerned and when development is essential for national security i think it's crucially important that we understand that the worst thing that you can do to those islands would be to have them fall under the occupation of china and that is an ever present risk in the indo pacific given the expanding presence and indeed almost unchallenged control of china uh, across the south china sea vinay hmm absolutely and dr kohli how do you look at this is this an opportunity or uh, you know is this a contingency that india definitely needs to prepare for well definitely uh, avinit uh, good afternoon to my fellow panelists and to dear news ex viewers i think uh, uh, congress has uh, you know we we've seen inequality in this country uh, on various fronts there's been inequality of income there's been inequality of wealth there's been inequality or unequal development vis-a-vis the regions you know we saw some of the regions which were left behind totally isolated and you know, i'm quite surprised when they say let the tribals be where they are let's not disturb their flora and fauna or the environment they live in well this government follows sabka saath sabka vikas when you need the whole country to grow when you need the remotest corners of the country to go and i agree with professor nalapat i mean the chinese threat the way china is you know fiddling into even the neighboring countries and trying to create naval and army bases there the air force bases there i mean all three uh, forces they are trying to create bases everywhere in fact they are having a fight we saw uh, they they get into a, a discord with philippines sometime they get into a discord with some other nation simply because they forcibly try and capture or they forcibly try and intrude with the aim of capturing and creating a base and i think uh, i think taiwan is one of them i mean we can just go on listing the countries with every single neighbor they have a a discord for the same reason i think india has perceived this threat very realistically that you cannot be sur- surrounded by bases uh, uh, you know army bases or naval bases around your country while we are just watching and this is our own territory we are not going into anybody's territory nicobar is very much our territory i mean a population of 8 to 10000 i remember in um, in the nicobar uh, south uh, greater nicobar island area and you know uh, as far as the shampen community is concerned I think did the did the Congress do the homework to go and ask the Shampen community, which I think uh, Jairam Ramesh mentioned about that they would like to be left alone. They would not like to be. Their policy was that we will not disturb them and do and not go and ask them. As I agree with Professor Nalapa today, those tribal communities are on some of the top positions in the country. If they were not given a chance, they would never have risen. Their standards of living have come out. They were living a life which was completely isolated from rest of the world. They didn't know what was what was electronics. they didn't know what was internet they didn't know what was telephone mobile phone i mean these things have brought prosperity to people these things have helped in raising the standard of living of people around the world so why should a particular tribal community be left out i mean i in fact uh, uh, if i don't sound political uh, because of congress's long rule of about 55 years or 60 years in this country the country's regional imbalance is very very visible we can see some states which has prospered where we see some other states which have not prospered why we are one country we are not we are not we are a big country but not as big that we cannot look after some of the states which are which have been backward and then there is tourism there is there is geopolitical security there is a uh, trade you know lot of trade happens around that area if there is a port there if there are if there is gas and solar plants there that area will become mainstream of the country i mean it will help in trade it will help in tourism it will he- protect us from geopolitical risk so i fail to understand i mean and when you launch a project you know the environmental concerns are taken care of if it's a seismic zone you know there are there is a team of experts there is a team of scientists who study the seismic activity in that area there is a team if there is deforestation being done there is double the amount of afforestation being done if you have to uproot certain number of trees it's a policy of environment ministry that you have to plant at least the double number of trees elsewhere so i don't think you know the cost of that is being met several times so i fail to understand if you have to oppose for the sake of opposing everything this is what i meant you know a constructive opposition is very good for the country but an opposition which is constantly on criticizing every single move of the government 
Well, the government has been voted in for the third consecutive term. Something right. I, I have to convey this to the Congress uh, think tank. Something right must have been done by this government that they've been voted in for the third time. Even if it's a coalition, they've been voted in. So if you keep opposing everything, then, you know, you are proving yourself wrong that you are opposing something which is right. And people don't agree with that. So I think, and, and for God's sake, do they have on record a survey from the greater Nicobar population? Have the people said that we don't want development here? Have the people said we don't want a gas plant? We don't want development. We don't want, uh, you know, uh, ships to pass through this. We don't want education here. We don't want opportunities for career here. Have they gone and asked? The answer maybe is no, they haven't gone. I mean, it's just opposition for the sake of opposition. So I completely disagree with Congress. I think uh, development of any kind of this uh, government follows a path of Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas. The remotest corners of the country, I feel, should be included. Inclusive growth is the mantra of this government that no part of the country should be left untouched. We saw Lakshadweep, where Prime Minister himself went. That was one area which was again neglected. It was lying far and wide, not even accessible. The flights were poor. The connectivity wasn't there. Ever since the Prime Minister went, we've seen a lot happening in Lakshadweep. So I think if the government is trying to connect these remote corners of the country to the mainstream, I think that should be appreciated and it should not be criticized. And the geopolitical risks are very realistic. I think this should be done sooner than later without listening to any opposition remarks being made beneath. Mm, you're absolutely right. And uh, Commodore Singh, where do you stand on this? You know, just a few days ago, we were discussing how aggressively China is in fact uh, creating its unnecessary presence in the South China Sea. It has also worried uh, the United Nations, which China happens to be a part of. Uh, and this is our own area that we are talking about. This is something that uh, belongs to India. And we are still, you know, on that uh, zigzag and top, topsy-turvy trajectory in figuring out what should the priority be. Well, let me first, uh, you know, stick to the maritime dimension of this because this discussion seems to be getting very political and seems to be missing the woods for the trees, I'm sorry to say. The fact of the matter is that development is important. There is no doubt about it. We have to do it. The islands need to be developed. What is being said is that please give it due consideration and do it in a very systematic manner in which the environment is not affected. Climate change today is a reality in the maritime domain. We are losing centimeters of land every year due to, due to rising sea levels. We are going to create this huge infrastructure program of ports, of a transshipment terminal, uh, oil and gas facility. Are we taking into account that the mangroves will be removed? You can plant trees anywhere else in the world. But the fact is the damage done over there to the environment cannot be, cannot be uh, done away with because you planted trees somewhere else. So I think we need to first look at things very objectively. I have no problem with the development. It has to be done, but it has to be done in a very, very methodical, scientific and transparent manner, which is what I understand from what I've read about this has not been the case so far. It's been rushed through in most cases because the program had to be initiated. As far as the political dimension goes, let us not get into whether somebody did it or somebody did not do it. The third part is the geopolitical security challenge. Please understand this is a part of India. China is not going to come and occupy an island here. It may go and occupy a Filipino island. It may go and occupy a, a Brunei island. It's not going to occupy an Indian island if we don't have a facility over there on those islands. And secondly, this is not a military base that we are setting up. We may have facilities where ships may come and go, but this is not a military base that is going to be set up there. There is no provision for that. There is already a naval air station there which is carrying out enough coastal surveillance. So I think we need to understand what exactly are we, are we is this whole argument about. The argument is about whether Great Nicobar Island can take the strain of such a major infrastructure development program or not, considering the, eco the very fragile ecology of the area, considering the ravages of climate change that are affecting that entire belt. We know Maldives is going to get inundated in some time. We know that Agati is losing 15 centimeters of land every year. We know all these things are happening. So are we catering for that? If those mangroves are removed, it is not about so many trees going away. It is about the entire marine ecology getting disturbed your marine flora and fauna getting disturbed, your corals getting disturbed. You cannot transplant corals from one place to another because you think they'll get damaged somewhere else. In fact, global, <clears throat> global warming is a reality. You need acidification of the seas is taking place. Fish are going further and further away towards cooler waters. People are losing their livelihoods by the day. Are we catering for all this? That is what we have to see. And that is why, while I say, like I said, 
development is very important it is important for india india wants to be a maritime power in the future if it has to be a maritime power it has to create adequate maritime infrastructure to to be reckoned as a maritime power so obviously that has to be done the only issue is this should be taken this should be considered very carefully and every possible precaution to preserve the ecology and the and the uh, <coughs> the na natural habitat of the area should be should be retained that's what i i'd like to say on this hmm uh, general soi where do you stand on this uh, commodore jaising is obviously right that the flora and fauna needs to be maintained as well the ecology should not be disturbed but at the same time the long term goals of india being a maritime superpower can also be accommodated while keeping these hygiene factors in mind absolutely uh, vinit uh, thanks a lot for uh, inviting me and in fact uh, i would agree with uh, uh, aj singh sir because uh, uh, these points are important but at the same time the keeping in view the strategic importance of andaman and nicoba where they are adding about there are about 700 nautical miles away and adding about 3 lakh square kilometer of uh, a economic zone to india which also uh, gives us proximity to a lot of mineral resources and oil and uh, different kinds of uh, uh, they also add on to our reach and our friends will agree with me that it also increases our reach in the indo pacific region it uh, enables us to dominate that region so on one side while the naval presence is already there the andaman nicobar command is already there but the need to strengthen is further and to strengthen it further not only by presence of army and navy but also to develop carry out the overall development of the area so the people are empowered the whole area is empowered and they are part and parcel of the india the first point uh, uh, in the islands is indra uh, point is the uh, farthest point which also need to be taken care which uh, enables us to look and uh, uh, carry out the interaction with thailand and myanmar and uh, indonesia and uh, bangladesh there are so many countries which come in the periphery and we are can able are able to dominate those areas so as far as the uh, strategic spend and from defense perspective i would say that is very very important to carry on carry out the overall development while keeping in mind the uh, points of uh, uh, agency sir that uh, ecological has to be taken care of the local aspiration has to be met the local culture and tradition have to be respected i am from naga regiment which is a tribal regiment i understand that ethos and cultures are totally different what we think in uh, the way we think in punjab and haryana and uh, uh, up bihar uh, there the thought process is total gaon bhuda and the local tribal head is the main person they don't bother about the district magistrate and the police ssp so we need to respect those aspects we need to take care of those culture we need to uh, encourage and maybe enhance their cultural heritage that kind of thing has to be taken care of, but uh, i am i am for the development this is a huge opportunity because the uh, xp international airport develop that also can be used by the navy that also can be used by the uh, it gives us a of option there is another naval base already there is another airport coming up there so uh, it also the kind of port facilities which develop that also gives a facility to the navy to enable the faster build up if need be so all this infrastructure development indirectly also helps in the defense preparedness of the country we need hmm absolutely professor nalapath your thoughts on uh, you know what has been articulated by commodore singh as uh, well as uh, general soi that uh, you know india's ambitions uh, can also uh, be achieved while keeping sustainability in mind well i think uh, commodore singh is quite right about the transparency factor and frankly the advantage of a democracy is transparency there is only one caveat and that is where matters of security are concerned there needs to be a certain degree of uh, secrecy uh, i think both our military experts will agree with me on that so barring that certainly there needs to be a transparent uh, 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 method of showing how this development is beneficial to the country as a whole and frankly the security of the indo pacific as a whole which is why i made my earlier point that very great care should be taken that there should not be infiltration of of groups and elements that are frankly friendly with uh, pakistan and china uh, uh, linked to pakistan and china and both these countries have networks 
uh, even functioning within the country, networks in, in various fields of activity. That has got to be very carefully monitored. And I'm sure the security agencies under NSA Ajit Doval are doing that. Uh, having said that, I would again like to repeat that, yes, you know, the fact is that, I mean, uh, human beings are human beings. All human beings are equal. And this Elvin philosophy that you have to keep uh, certain people constantly in what Elvin called a primitive state. Well, it's like saying that we should all be cavemen beneath, that we should not be what they are. It's better to be what I mean, uh, what we were thousands of years ago, which is making, frankly, is an insulting to the great tribal communities of India. The tribal the population of India is as gifted, as capable of, of intellectual effort, as high potential in terms of productivity as any other part of the population. So the, the fact is they need to be given an equal chance rather than frozen into some kind of a time war in which they're kept away from anything that's happening in the world around them, which unfortunately is what happened for several decades as a consequence of the advice of very relevant. And the last point, again, I repeat, yes, very definitely uh, environment is important and uh, very definitely all these issues are important. There's no question about that. At the same time, what is also important is national security. And from the point of view of India, these islands are a very valuable resource, not just as very correctly pointed out by the, by the military expert, as an extra expansion of the Indian economic zone, where the, the, you know, India can have trim, garner a tremendous harvest, but they're important as locations for, for facilities that can ensure that India join other countries in securing the Indo-Pacific. It's a collective effort of democracies to support the Indo-Pacific security against predatory powers that are authoritarian. And India is in the front rank of that uh, collective security where the Indo-Pacific is concerned. This, this development that, that we are talking about, freezing it, I can understand maybe altering a bit here and there or making, putting in some uh, environmental checks, uh, uh, but freezing it completely would, in my view, be tantamount to giving the Chinese a free pass in doing whatever they're doing uh, while we just stand by. I don't mm. think that's, that, that's a proper policy at all. Mm. All right. We've also uh, run out of time. We'll take concluding thoughts from the remainder of our guests, starting with Dr. Kohli. Well, I think uh, with due respect to, uh, <clears throat> to the Commodore who's on the panel, I mean, uh, obviously, you know, you know the government, when, when it undertakes this kind of a project, you do take care of ecology surveys, maritime surveys to ensure that there's no harm done to the coral reef. He, what the concerns he expressed are very good. But then, I mean, it would be very strange if a government can simply go and start uprooting trees and disturb the ecology balance, the maritime, uh, you know, you know, uh, living beings there. I mean, I, I would be very surprised. This is that only an irresponsible government would do. Well, all the projects would have been done so far in the country. We've never had uh, this kind of irresponsible move where you just uh, rampantly go and start destroying something. I really don't think that is going to be the case. The concerns are very genuine. And I'm sure uh, the committees, the ministries which are in charge, which are responsible, there are, uh, there are surveys being done. There are proper investigations being done before launching any one of the projects to, to say that, you know, it is going to be, uh, get, things are going to, going to get disturbed there. Are you going to disturb the whole ecological balance? I, I'm afraid I do not agree because the geopolitical concerns at this point of time are very paramount. The threat is very realistic and I'm sure nobody knows more than the defense experts at this point of time what the China's mischief uh, in the South China Sea area and the Indian Ocean is, is known to the whole world. And I think we need not emphasize that. It is very important. Sometimes, you know, your priorities have to be decided on the basis of geopolitical threats which are looming large over not just India, but the whole region. I think in, in the backdrop of that, this move is being made in, in the process. As an ancillary product, we are getting a developed area. We are making sure that the people of that area come to the forefront, to the mainstream, which should be welcomed. If there is a bit of a sacrifice to be made, I'm sure there could be a little bit of sacrifice on maritime life there. 
Well, so be it because I think nothing is more than security. Jahan hai to Jahan hai, Vini, is all I have to say. All right. Commodore Singh, concluding thoughts, sir. 30 seconds. Sir, we can't hear you, sir. Uh, am I unmuted now? Can you hear me? I can hear you now, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I fully agree that development is very important. We have to develop our, our maritime uh, capabilities. If we are to be a maritime power, the 21st century great power contestation is going to happen in the maritime domain. So there is no doubt that development of our coastal areas is very, very important. Of course, security is just one part of it. It's about economic development and it all comes under the overall ambit of security, it may not be military security per se. And also, as mentioned, uh, environmental concerns are important. And yes, I do agree with Dr. Kohli that yes, they would have been given due consideration. But there are, there are still worries which should be taken on board. It should not be dismissed offhand and said, oh, we've taken everything into account, don't worry about it. They have to be discussed. These things need to be debated. That's why we, are, we have a parliament. And once debated, everyone seems, will agree to if, 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 the, if the argument in favor of it is, is irrefutable. But yes, I do, I do not want to at any stage suggest that development is not important. It is very important from the country's progress as well as our future security, as well as uh, India becoming a future maritime power. All right. General Soy. Yeah, absolutely. I also vote for the development. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Just a couple of things, because since I'm from tribal regiment, you see a spear uh, behind me, and uh, I am also wearing a, a Mizu uh, jacket. Proud of the fact that I commanded, I served with the uh, Naga troops tribal, so I understand their sensibility. So while carrying out these developments, it is very, very important to keep in mind the local custom, local ethos, local, local sensibilities, because they are our strength. Ultimately, only army or uh, navy cannot do anything. Ultimately, the local people, we have to take them with us. We have to make them understand that this is for you. Because there are many uh, people with the propaganda, with the social media, who try to antagonize, who try to uh, say, okay, your life will go change, you will die, you will be thrown out, you will be sent to the jungles where the, so many industries, so many people will come. That kind of thing we need to think of in the long term. All right. So that is also part and parcel of the security, overall security and bit. It is not only the troops, not only aircraft, not only... Understood, sir. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.